We draw a line on a piece of paper and that becomes maybe change of patterns on the ground, maybe it becomes a bench, maybe it becomes a wall. And this affects how we act in a space, how we talk to each other, how we interact, how we work with each other and what we do in this space. Hello, my name is Bahana Nasia. I'm an architect and we draw a lot of lines. And I am specialized on participative planning. That means I try to decide with the people what kind of line, what kind of wall, what kind of bench we are creating and what, for what purpose. I have been doing participative processes for 15 years and there are a lot of differences in different communities. And I was wondering, some communities, some parts of the community are much more difficult to engage. And they very often don't have an idea how space could be used differently. Or that access to space gives them some kind of freedom or some kind of empowerment. So we have been working with a lot of bottom-up initiatives in the last 10 years. And nowadays, I'm more concerned about the young people's access to space. And I joined four, um, four years ago the Observatory of Rural Need. And what we put together in research is that certain people or groups of the society are more in in danger of not having the right input to enhance the possibilities in their lives. And that was a little bit concerning. In the Rural Observatory at Cost Action, we worked across Europe with different um, researchers from all countries in Europe. And there are differences in countries, but there is a specific pattern who is more in, the, uh, in danger to become a need. Need means not in employment, not in education, not in training. So people who have less possibilities to have a free life with their own um, income, with their own space and so on. So the main groups who are in danger are people who have migration background. So the first generation who comes to a new country is already in danger because they don't have the uh, same opportunities or they don't have the same knowledge about the country and the local conditions, but also they are offsprings. So youth in second generation, and even when they become uh, adults, they have less opportunities in our societies in Europe. The second group is people who have any kind of um, restrictions. That can be a disability, that can be a health condition. So those people are not welcomed in our society. They have less opportunities. And there is a group which is not so obvious and not so researched, and that's the reason why we have this observatory. People in a city have different opportunities and people in areas which are rather rural, that can be the fringe, that can be the surrounding of a city, that can be a small village in, in a mountainous region, they also have less opportunities. And we got thinking, why is that? So we have been developing and looking at best practices in terms of public employment services, in terms of ed education. And we as planners have all the big portion in this um, unjust situation. The reason is we plan all our settlements in a way that certain groups do not have the same access, the same opportunities. And because everything is financed in a way that place costs a lot or the decision making process in place like public space is so dif difficult that people don't feel like they can have access, make a decision, participate, bring change. So in spatial justice, 
we are looking into this spatial distribution of opportunities, access to place, access to do something, affordable places or free places where I can think, engage and exchange. And um, to make this spatial injustice more visible, I would like you to join me on a right, mental right. So if you go through a city, a town, in the center you would have a lot of things, inspirations, things uh, to look at on the ground floor. So you look around yourself and you see maybe someone doing handcrafts, some artists, some little shops, some other businesses, some offices. And as a young person, you are aware there are a lot of things which I can do. But on urban fringe or on countryside, very often these ground floor areas have no stimulation, no inspiration, nothing to engage with, nothing to aspire to become when you are gr uh, grown up, N no place where you can do an internship or a training. So this is the basis of our concept, that we go through an area and look what is visible, what is accessible for young people. And in special justice training, we are trying to think about how could we make places affordable, like places for activation which are interim use or which are free of charge for social uh, entrepreneurs and so on. But also, how can we make the public space in a way that people can come and connect? Because this is not the field of any teachers, any uh, public uh, employment services. This is the community we need. This is the community space we need where we can say, we as a village grew up youngsters. We come together and stimulate young people to make choices how to pursue their career or discuss their values or give a footprint on how things should be looking like or how places should be used. And this, this process of participation, advocacy, empowerment is very, very, very relevant for all participative work we do as experts, as architects, as urban planner, regional planner, but also policy developer. Because if we have people and young people on board who know what else would be possible instead of what we have now, if people are informed and perhaps want to try out to be an entrepreneur, want to be a social organization, if they have this aspiration, then it's much easier to find the right space, the right funding model, the right organization structure. If this doesn't happen, then our communities, our spaces, villages, towns will slowly die as they do right now. Because we have a lot of competition, international competition, digital competition, and these this places which used to be, I don't know, maybe a place where you get milk products or meat products, they all are gone or in some countries they are just about to be gone. So we have to have new ideas to occupy these places and invite young people to be a part, to come up with new innovation, new ideas, how to use the spaces, how to bring uh, society together and develop ideas, uh, solutions and responses to all the challenges we are facing on a regular basis. So I said we draw a line as architects and we want young people to be on board with us to decide for what this line stands and therefore we want you to be a part of the special justice movement. Thank you.